Welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, where we embark on a journey of personal growth, wellness, and empowerment. Join me, Stacey Chalemi, as we explore the insightful conversations with experts and thought leaders to uncover the valuable tips and actionable insights that will elevate your life. From discussions on leadership and emotional intelligence to navigating midlife challenges and embracing the personal transformation in your life, this podcast is your go-to resource for inspiration and growth. Get ready to thrive, evolve, and unleash your true potential with me, your host, Stacey Chalemi. And today I am so excited because we have an amazing guest on our show today. She is the CEO, Pauline Uden of Gradient, and she is here today to talk about an amazing accomplishment that she achieved in the marketing world. She has realized that the marketing world has changed and we need to evolve with it. And she has come up with a great method to help people in businesses, small, medium-sized businesses, entrepreneurs, and even large corporations shift their marketing techniques to a different way that is more effective and productive that will help your company grow and excel. Because as you know, things are changing rapidly in the world of marketing, and this world is constantly changing, so we have to keep up with the times. So Pauline, tell us a little about yourself and your wonderful business. Sure. So my name is Pauline Uda, as you mentioned, um, and I lead an agency that is primarily based in New York, but we also have offices in uh, Miami, Los Angeles, and we just opened in Paris on the consulting side of our business. And the type of work that we do is called experiential marketing. And the best way to explain what that is, is while more traditional marketing will tell you what a brand or product is, Experiential marketing will let you live that brand. So if you think about an experience, a moment, a pop-up experience, a, um, a conference booth, a guerrilla marketing moment where you just could feel what the brand or the product was all about, that would have been experiential marketing. I love it. So, you know, how does, you know, like if you had for people who are not familiar with experimental marketing, you know, when you look at today's marketing and you look at the marketing that you have created with your company, how is it different and why is it so much more effective in today's society? Yep. So obviously we've, we're all experiencing it. The media landscape has shifted tremendously. While uh, certainly when I grew up, uh, the reaching out of audiences was significantly easier. It could be expensive, but you knew what you need to do to reach a large audience. You would use mass media, TV, newspapers, magazines, radio. Now, in the past 20 or so years, the media landscape has completely fragmented. None of us really truly watch TV anymore. Um, we will stream content, therefore select the content that we wanna watch without the interruption of advertising. The ad landscape online is at best ignored, um, at worst for advertisers blocked. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that any of us that went and got our nails done last time did not open a People magazine the way I used to do it when I was uh, um, uh, a young woman. And instead, we will look at content on our phones. So from there, how is a brand to interact, to get information about a new product to an audience? A lot of it is now going to come through social media. Mm -hmm. And in social media, again, because you have more of a control on the content that you receive, that you are fed, you're, you can't push to audiences as mm -hmm. a simple ad. You need to create enough of, a, of an interest in the content creators, in the influencers, that they feel that that's gonna be interesting to their audiences. Because as an influencer, if you keep feeding just ads, you're gonna start losing your audience as well. So yes. brands have had to create interactions with influencers, content creators, and consumers 
that is interesting enough, generates enough of a, an emotion that these people want to create content from it and want to share it to their wider audiences. And if it's that content is good enough, that gets then shared in a viral way. And that is the earned media that uh, today brands need to, to create and generate. I see so many brands um, that do things and businesses too, um, you know, even going from, from healthcare to the industrial, you know, uh, industry to all different types of, of businesses, they're still stuck in the old ways. And they, even though they see the changes going on, they don't realize, you know, what's, you know, uh, they don't understand why they're not making the profits that they're making, you know, that they, they used to make. And they're looking, why am I plateaued? You know, why am I losing money? I don't understand. Nothing has changed. I'm still bringing in, you know, X amount of, you know, sales. I'm still doing this. I'm still doing that. You know, this many people are shopping, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not growing, you know, yeah. and, you know, what are some of the ways, you know, that you have, you know, really gotten your message across to people so they can understand why it's so important to shift their market and techniques? Yep. So um, sometimes the, especially if you're a, a smaller company, it, it helps to look at what the big boys are doing, right? It's yeah. uh, you, you can, they can uh, invest and test and then you can learn from what they're doing. And so I'll take some of uh, the examples of some of our biggest clients. And if you look at L'Oreal, they have significantly changed how they approach the launch of a new product. And it's mm -hmm. interesting because they have shifted their approach. They're still, they're based on conversations that we've had so far with them, they're pushing it even further. They, they feel like they've uh, they've take, taken three steps in this direction, but that they need to keep pushing further. But yes. they are significantly ahead of their competition. Um, and uh, what that what I mean by that is their competition, the other big um, beauty conglomerates, will oftentimes start with what's my TV ad, what's my print ad. And then mm -hmm. once they have that image, they then think later on about what is going to be my launch moment? What's that experience? But that is going to be with a significantly smaller budget, um, with a significantly smaller timeline. And so it ends up being a siloed little moment for a siloed group of individuals. Whereas mm -hmm. uh, L'Oreal, um, will completely flip that script and think about what should we do if we were to regroup two or three of the key influencers from each key market and bring mm -hmm. them all together in one place for a really high impact moment, um, what would that look like? And from there, what content can be created from it? And from there, what media are we going to need to promote and push this message to as many people and as wide of a group as we can? So they put the experience at the center of their whole marketing effort. And mm -hmm. um, L'Oreal has been, and they're, they're they have, uh, there's many reasons why they're doing well, but they've had very solid growth, whereas some of their key competitors have, to your point, plateaued or even decreased at a time where beauty as a whole is growing. Right. And that's a very smart way to do it because they're, you know, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes of small businesses or medium sized businesses is that they, they focus on one small targeted market. So mm -hmm. their chances of growth only go so far, but if mm -hmm. you take three different areas and there are three different uh, types of people with high influences and you, you put them together from different aspects of the company that are doing well the chances of growth, if you put the right content and you put it in the right social media, 
is, you know, enormous. They could have an, an, you know, total viral explosion where many people are now excited about this. They see, you know, they're seeing maybe three celebrities or three, you know, high influence ambassadors working, you know, working together and, you know, promoting different aspects of the product, you know, or, or products. And you have now a larger group, instead of just purchasing one product, they might purchase all three products or they might purchase, you know, two out of the three. So the sales could actually go rapidly up, it seems. Am I grasping this right? You are grasping this right. Absolutely. And one of the things also is, you know, um, like mirrors like. So if you've got if you bring together influencers from different parts of the world, they're going to be excited by their interaction. And that's mm -hmm. going to generate a certain energy that you otherwise wouldn't have if it's the same people that they that they always see. Right. Um, and and from there, you can you also need to think about what can we do most of the time if you bring in influencers, a lot of them you might have had to, you know, contract. Well, they're they're going to give me two to three posts, you know, based on their contract, no matter what, um, you know, they're they're paid for it. OK, great. But if you manage to create a moment, an experience where they are going to like it so much, be so uh, emotionally connected to the moment that you've created for them that they are now going to post 10 times. You've just multiplied by three the media that you're gonna get out of the same contract that you had with this person. Wow. So the, the way you do that is by really thinking ahead of all of the things you can do, but that does require planning ahead of time and really um, putting the experience at the center of that thinking like L'Oreal does. Wow. I like that idea. And it's totally, it, it's out of the box, you know, because you, you don't, you don't, you know, I've just started to see some people, like I was telling you, you know, change their way of marketing, doing different things. But I, I like how you, you know, put different influencers together to really mm -hmm. create a high impact where people are now getting excited and they're now, you know, you know, posting and you can regenerate different content and even repurpose the content and probably put it in different areas also. And so you could really have a magnificent outcome from that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, you know, one of the key things that we also um, work on with our clients, you know, in addition to thinking about working far enough ahead um, yeah, and really yeah. thinking about how you can integrate all of the, the different efforts that you make from this core experience. One of the things that we really focus on with our clients is the measurability. And yes. you can't successfully measure uh, an investment, a result after the fact. It mm -hmm. is so important to give yourself the time beforehand to think about what is the business objective you're trying to reach. Right. Therefore, what is the marketing objective that comes from that? Mm -hmm. And what tools, what KPIs are you going to use that is going to allow you to confirm that you truly had a, an impact on right this measure that you're looking at. That's a, a, a very important, um, you know, uh, statement that you made, because I don't, I think a lot of people do the opposite I've seen in business is whereas they try to measure it after the fact, and they don't really plan and look at these aspects beforehand. And a lot of times I don't think people give themselves enough of time to plan and they do things, you know, as, you know, you know, larger companies give themselves time to plan. But I think smaller companies or, you know, um, entrepreneurs, you know, kind of do things a little bit on the later side, you know, because they're not thinking like that. And, you know, they and they're not measuring the business objective or the they're looking at the marketing objective or the KPIs. And, and I think that's a, a huge component for success that people have to really keep in mind. I truly believe that if you can't um, measure the uh, effectively 
the result that you're looking for, your investment is probably best spent somewhere else. So right. if you um, want to, if your business requires a shift in brand perception, um, mm -hmm. let's say that uh, you and your competitor, um, for some reason, your brand is perceived as slower, right? You're, you're slower to react than your competition. Therefore, right. you need to do something to show that actually we're, you know, we have very solid response time. I'm making this up on the fly. But mm -hmm. if that's your objective, right? So it's not a direct leads kind of effort. It's a brand perception that you're trying to shift. You can still affect that, right? So yes, yes. you yeah. could create a moment where you can really show, create an experience that brings that, uh, that, that uh, brand um, experience to life but you need to know what it was like before what were your what was your perception before what's your perception after is there a significant shift and is now is there now a shift in brand likability all of this is absolutely doable if you think of it ahead of time but if you plan a whole project and then it's all complete and you get results of yes we had 3,000 people that came and you're like, great, what did it do for my brand? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, the only way you can know is to evaluate before and after. And there's different yes. mechanisms to do it. But no matter who you are, um, you know, whether you're a small business owner or the CMO of a larger company, you should always have a clear sense of yeah. what is my return on investment and in order right. to do that, you need to be clear on what's my business objective. Exactly. Exactly. hundred percent. I think, you know, it's, it's so important to keep those things in mind because I, I, you know, I, I really think a lot of people don't, don't really measure before and after it, 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 and it's so vital, but I think, I think a lot of people um, forget to do that, you know, and, um, you know, it, it amazes me. I, you know, the one thing I love about your, your service that you provide is that you, you really focus on the person's emotions, you know, you really want to grab their emotions, you know, you know, and you've been very successful at doing it. What gave you the idea or, you know, what drove you to create a service like yours? Because it differentiates so much from the traditional way of marketing. Yes. So experiential marketing has been growing significantly. So I'm, you know, it's important to, to uh, state that while Gradient is a recognized player in our field, that the field overall is growing. And um, we've seen, we've uh, actually done research this year, which we have been leveraging for a white paper that I'll tell you a little bit more about. Um, but one of the things that we did was interview uh, over 750 marketers to understand what is your uh, budget right now in this field of experiential and how has that shifted? And, yes. um, you know, the gradient, I believe, is a, a, a recognized player in this growing field. Because what mm -hmm. we're seeing is that the field overall has been growing and is continuing to grow. We've had 81% of responders say that they've increased their experiential budgets over the past three years. So they already have most of them, 20 to 30% of their budgets that go towards experiential marketing and 81% of them say that it's growing. So, wow. and- and there's variations, you know, beauty has shifted more than other oh, industries, yeah. but it is overall growing. So I think what we're seeing is that, you know, while traditional agencies are in many places um, suffering because mm -hmm. a lot of them used to make money mostly on media. And as we talked about earlier, media is completely transforming and today... Yeah. You, you don't, you can't make the same kind of budgets that uh, you do managing influencers than you did placing TV ads. 
Yes. Um, so, you know, the, the era of Mad Men is long gone. And so are yes. the two hour lunches over martinis. Um, <laughs> but you do have uh, this whole new field that is growing of which Gradient is a part of. I love it. I love it. And do you feel that a large uh, percentage of marketers and marketing companies are still going the traditional route that they haven't really caught on to the uh, the different type of, ex you know, uh, experimental uh, marketing? So I think the important thing is that no matter what, the the integration of a campaign is key. And you do need still a certain amount of the video assets for you know YouTube advertising. And so you, there is still traditional marketing is still very much necessary. The question is more, where do you place it in importance and is it integrated with everything else? And so what we've seen is that successful marketers are the ones that truly create integrated programs in, mm. with experiential that is integrated with the rest of their experience, with the rest of their overarching efforts. Yes. And the ones that are being left behind are the ones that, sure, they've heard that this is important, so they do it, but they still keep it very much siloed and separate. Mm -hmm. um, and here, what they the tough thing they need to do is to rethink how they organize their marketing teams and how they measure their results. And once they start from the goals, clear goals, clear measurable goals, and they think about how do I need to organize my teams to get to these results? And therefore, what type of marketing efforts do I need to get to these kinds of results? Once they're willing to rethink how they approach their marketing efforts overall and the, the organization of their marketing teams overall, then it's not so much a matter of, is it the old or the new, but is it the integrated? Yes, makes sense. It makes so much sense. Uh, do you do you feel that a lot of um, companies aren't well educated, like a lot of the marketing companies, because they it's it's you know it's kind of fresh. And they're so you know, used to doing things, you know, you know, a specific way for so long that they don't really even know how to integrate this type of campaign into their into their services. Absolutely. And look, we're, we're all creatures of habits. You know, I've I've been doing this this way for 20 years. Why would I rethink it? Um, we we all have that approach, right? There's media and marketing accelerates so much there's so much shift that's constantly happening that it's tough for a lot of clients to um to take the time to really think through these major shifts um yeah. we've tried to be helpful in that effort and as yeah. i mentioned yeah. earlier we developed a full white paper um we tried to keep it short and sweet but we developed a whole white paper um that is focused on um creating a measurable experiential marketing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, it's the whole framework that we've developed will allow uh, readers to ask themselves the questions that they need in order to make sure that whatever investment they've decided to put into experiential marketing, that they are going to be able to extract as much as possible from it. And the framework is called the IMPACT model. So I'll explain what the acronym stands for. Uh, follow me here if you don't mind. This is, this is the moment you got to listen. Uh, mm -hmm. IMPACT stands for Integrated, Measurable, Participatory, Effective, Community Building, and True to Brand. So there are mm -hmm. six facets um, to make sure that if and when experiential marketing is the right approach, that you can make sure that you are organizing your teams and organizing your effort in a way to extract the most possible um, results from it. And integrated basically means 
thinking about all the channels, the media channels that could be involved, thinking about all the different uh, formats that this could come to life. So I'll give you a quick example, but oftentimes we see marketing and sales being extremely separate. Yeah. And uh, if you have marketing that brings to life the, um, the sh a shoe um, and all of its uh, amazing uh, marketing talking points, right? It can do all of this and all that, and it's amazing, right? And then you mm -hmm. go to the shoe store and you're like, oh yeah, I saw this and you know, it's gonna help me do all this and that. And the salesperson knows nothing about it. You've yeah. completely broken the experience for the consumer. And so yes. really thinking through how you can tie in the effort from mm -hmm. marketing through to retail, um, yes. to the retail experience, which is very much a part of a of, of full, of full experience, um, that's something that we we dive into in this white paper. Measurable, right. we've already spoken about, but really thinking about what are your objectives, therefore, what are your KPIs, and how are you going to measure it? And at the end of our white paper, we actually have uh, worksheets, so people can actually sort of like work through the, 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 the problems or ask their marketing team to work through it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm effective, uh, sorry, participatory is the really allowing your, um, the people that are going to be in this experience to interact with your brand or interact with each other. And right. it's the difference between when you think about it, the kind of being shout at marketing that you would get from a TV versus yeah. participating in an experience where right. I'm now right. going to be involved in it I'm, and that's going to make me care about it more right. um, and that brings us to effective which is is this emotion creating or not right am mm -hmm. i is this uh, generating any of the emotions wonder joy surprise fear whatever it can be that yes. somehow is going to connect from my heart to my brain because we like to think that we make purchasing decisions with our brain but we don't it's yeah. all heart based right yeah. mm -hmm. i I'm, i buy it because i want to not yeah. because and, and then and then i make my brain develop the logic to justify the exactly. emotional desire that i have so have you triggered that emotion that you're trying to get at community building is there a reason for me to share with the people that are next to me in the experience but also with the people that are on my social media is there a reason for me or an easy way for me to motivate other people that i know to go to the experience afterwards because of a b or c all of that right. is about community building and then true to brand could your direct competitor do exactly the same thing and right. would it still feel appropriate if it mm -hmm. does then it's not true to your own brand so what right. can you do to make sure that this experience is really unique to your story how can you make them live your story not your mm -hmm. competitor's story so those are all the yeah. elements um and they're all you know outlined with questions etc and hopefully to your point it can help marketers um, that maybe haven't had the opportunity to dive into this space it yeah. can give yeah. them a uh, a quick refresher course on how this works and more yes. importantly how to do it effectively Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to emphasize, you know, important factors that you want the listeners to understand, what are some of the things you'd like to, you know, emphasize to our, our, our listeners? What I'd like to emphasize is that experiential marketing is not a fad. It is a growing field. It is a space that all marketers and business owners should understand. Um, and more importantly, should be able to tell the difference between effective 
experiential marketing and what is essentially just event production. Right. That way, if and when this is the right approach for your business, right. you have a clear understanding of how to get the right return out of your investment. Mm -hmm. what, we, what we're really hoping for is that um, we won't hear what we've often heard, which is that experiential marketing is expensive. What we want to hear is that experiential marketing is a great investment. Yes, 100%. And I, I, I truly believe it is because I, I the, the way traditional marketing is today, you know, you're, you're seeing people watch TV less, you're seeing people go into magazines less, magazines aren't really being, you know, um, printed as much, you know, it's uh, more people for when it comes to radio, you know, they've had a huge drop in radio. And now people are listening to podcasts all the time. It's just the world is changing. People are changing. The needs are changing. So if the needs are changing, our marketing has to change because what worked then is not going to work now. You know, we have to go along with the times and, and emotion for me, you know, if I get, if, I'm not going to purchase a, a product unless I get excited about it. You know, if I get excited about a product, my emotions definitely will take over and you know, whether or not I need it or not, it's making me excited and I want it and I'm going to buy it you know and and i think that's an effective way to to you know get across is is to get people you know from the heart not from the brain you know because if we go from the brain we're more rational and we don't want to be rational we want to have that emotional excitement stirring making us want that that product or service and and then really imagining what it could do for us or the enjoyment that we'll get from it you know so it really i think it is an excellent way to, to market a product now tell everybody about the different services that you provide sure so gradient uh, offers uh, quite a few services starting from uh, experiential consulting. Um, so really helping our clients figure out how their uh, experience overall, their experience strategy overall can be improved to, um, to improve their business results. And so that can be looking at some of the issues that we highlighted in our conversation and figuring mm -hmm. out how to reshift their teams, how to reshift their marketing organization so that experience can become more central to the way they're, yeah. they think. So that's more like on the, on the thinking side. But then when we have uh, clients that already, already really um, have that organization in place and they need creative uh, production, then yes. we have a lot of clients that will come to us and say, we're launching this product. Here's the brief. Can you come up with a wonderfully creative idea? And then can you make it happen? And that's right. what a lot of our business is too. And that experience can be in person, but it can mm -hmm. also be live streamed. So we work with a lot of uh, clients that need to have a physical experience that is also live streamed um, to the world. Yes. Um, and so we can help our clients uh, in in quite a few areas, as long as it has experience at the core of the effort. Oh, I love it. Now, where can people get a hold of you? What's the best way to you know get, get to your website or can they find you on LinkedIn and so forth? Absolutely. So uh, Gradient can absolutely be found on our website. It's gradientexperience.com. So gradient, like a gradient of colors, gradientexperience.com. And from there, uh, our uh, listeners can also download the white paper that I mentioned. So they'll be able to easily get access to that and dive in. Um, and they are more than welcome to also reach out to us on LinkedIn, either on Gradient's LinkedIn page, Gradient Experience, or directly to me, Pauline Uda. Um, I believe I'm the only one on LinkedIn since it's not a very common name. Um, <laughs> but if you look for Pauline Uda Gradient, I'll come up and please feel free to reach out. I would love to continue any conversation about experiential marketing. I love it. Well, this has been amazing, Pauline. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I think it's, you know, this is, it's, 
this is definitely a topic that needs to be talked about more because I don't think a lot of people understand, you know, about, you know, about learning about the experience of marketing, getting excited about the, uh, you know, how, how the, how the shifts have changed now. And I, I think people, you know, people need to be more educated. So this is great that you came on the show and you talked about this because it's a type of marketing that, you know, is, you know, starting to be used, but a lot of people are still using the old route and they need to really confirm or integrate, like you said, you know, you know, independent on what the situation is, but um, this has been an amazing conversation. I thank you so much for coming on the show. And I, I love what you had to share. And I think it'll be very valuable to our our listeners, you know, who are in business, because this is a whole way of looking at marketing from a totally different aspect that could be very valuable in, in future growth for many companies and businesses. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed our conversation. Oh, same here. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.